So good morning, and it is a real pleasure to be back in Monaco. And I don't know how I drew uh, this interview, but I am so excited uh, to introduce you um, to the next guest. Uh, he was born in a Syrian desert to a Bedouin tribe. Uh, his mother died when he was very young and was raised by his grandmother, who believed that school was for lazy people. And yet, he spied in the classrooms through a hole in the wall until he was discovered and invited in by the teacher, became the best student in the class, qualified for a scholarship to go study in France, where eventually he got his PhD in computer science and worked for almost 15 years. Roll forward to 1985, where he bought a nearly bankrupt scaffolding business, which began, be, became the foundation for the Altrad Group. Last year, 1.6 billion euro in turnover. This year, almost 2.5 billion in turnover. It is today the world's leader in cement mixers and the European leader in scaffolding and wheelbarrows. And in his spare time, he also owns a rugby team and is an accomplished author. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 2015 EY World Entrepreneur of the Year, Moed Altred. So, Moed, great to see you, great to be back with you. Um, you're sitting in front of an audience that a year ago you were in, and, uh, and many of the entrepreneurs are looking forward to uh, the recognition that will come with their accomplishments. Tell us about the past year uh, since you've won the award. Tell us how that's affected both the business but also, but also you personally. Yes, thank you. Bonjour. Good morning. Uh, I'm happy to see you again. Pleased to see you again. Uh, it was a, a, a unique moment for me last year. As you know, I didn't expect to win, but uh, that's what happened. Now back to your question, Jay. Uh, it's a complete change in my life. Um, I have a, a sort of worldwide exposure. The consequences of that, that since last year, almost every day I had 10 invitations all over the world. Unfortunately, the good thing that I'm invited, so I'm pleased. The bad story about this, that unfortunately we, I can't honor all this so I have to choose. And the, the criteria of choosing uh, to uh, answer positively to <clears throat> an invitation is not easy. It's sometimes irrational. So that's what happened. Uh, but so part of my time is devoted to, uh, to, to social, to life, to people who invite me. So I've taken a lot of pleasure of doing that. At the same time, uh, I'm developing my company. So I had a growth to, sus to maintain people to look after 22,000 employees in Altrad Group. The growth you just mentioned. The trust, although I'm a shareholder of my own group to up, up to 80%, Nevertheless, I have other shareholders, such as banks, and also the French state, up to 10%. So I'm, I'm doing all that. You mentioned also the rugby club. You mentioned also, probably will mention, other missions I'm having. The fact that I was invited also by President Obama and by President Hollande and other uh, state heads, uh, for instance, Georgia, which we met together. So this is a big change for me. I try to, uh, with humility, to face this, uh, this exposure. But believe me, it's, uh, I, I, in any case, I'll do what I can. Yeah. 
you, you, you run the company uh, with such purpose, and, uh, and I think that's been one of the guiding influences. But talk a little bit about the role of your employees and how you connect with the importance, because you do talk about a mission and an adventure uh, that you've been on. Yep. But the role that uh, those 22,000 people play in the success of the business. Yes. I would like the 22,000 to be 40, uh, I hope next year or the year after. So I'm working on that. I always considered, uh, since the beginning, this story started 30 years ago. Uh, just a few figures. Over a period of 20, 30 years of uh, group existence, we had an average growth above 10%. This group never lost money, although some years, really, it was tough, but we didn't lose money. With this internal and external growth and this philosophy, why we reach this? Why? Although the product, as you ima could imagine, easily, it's poor. Uh, there is no, not a lot room for margin or gross margin, which is, which is that high. So few basics. Uh, the group is only 20% in France. The remaining part is all over the place in 100 uh, country. 20% uh, only in France. The remaining 80% of the turnover is outside France. Australia, China, a little bit of America, all the European countries and so on and so on. So, th few principles guided Jay, my, my philosophy. One, a company is a human venture. Before we talk about product, whether it's a scaffold, concrete mixer, or a high technology, whatever, this is my idea, and this is my answer to you. It's first of all, it has to be a human venture. A company, a group, is part of the society. It's not disconnected to the, from life. It's part of life. You, me, every day, we come work in a company. But the minute before, the hour before, we were at home with children, with a wife, with family. And we have, all of us, we have similar problems, sickness, health, uh, maybe money, uh, children are not, not working properly in school, children are performing in school, this, this sort of worries and emotional things that you were. I hear very often that some colleagues in various domain say, you are professional. The minute you, you come in, in the office, you have to to be professional, you forget about everything about your personal life. You are professional. Yes, yes indeed, I understand that. Nevertheless, the concept is wrong, according to me, because you and me, if we have a problem, it's not the minute I open the door and enter in the office, these problems will disappear. I don't think so. So, I'm not asking you as a head owner, president of a group or of a company, to interfere in the personal life of everybody. It's not my, my concern. It's just I want you to send a signal to your employee because you know them. You see, very often, you see these personal problems reflecting on our faces. It's, it's life. It's like this. We must not ignore this. The only thing I would like to ask you is just send a signal through a smile, through whatever mean you can use, saying, well, look, I understand you. Just be aware. Just understand that I'm here for you if you need me. Then stop. Stop. And believe me, probably nothing will happen. The person will not ask right, you a right. very... So it's, it's that you achieved a lot. 
in doing that. But that philosophy, right, really the, the coexistence of business and society is, is more complicated as you go cross border. Yes. So you operate in over a hundred countries. How, how does that translate when you start to deal cross-cultural, when you start thinking about a, a very diverse yes. workforce? Does it still yes. work for you? Does it still give yes. the, the right uh, um, kind of motivation for the employees to, to still believe in what Altrad and the, and the, the company's philosophy does? Yes. yes. Yes, we have a, we, we wrote a charter, which I started 30 years ago. In the beginning, believe me, it was few notes on a corner of a table I wrote. Then this was discussed with my colleagues. And then this became a small book. And every year we update this because we integrate other cultures, English, German, American, Chinese, Australian, whatever, South African, whatever. 100 country. And the idea is simple. Is this culture? Before you talk about technique and management means, it's a matter of culture. Why it's a matter of culture? Because your client, he's the one who's making your turnover. Now, take an example, a scaffold, a concrete mixer. If you look at the scaffold used by a, a mason in Germany, and you look at the scaffold used by the same mason, a different or equivalent mason in somewhere in France, but it's not the same. The German will tell you, I need a heavy scaffold. Because why is that? Because the work the weight you are putting in the scaffold is not that heavy. <laughs> there is no rational thing. But it's his culture. He sees the thing, thing like that. He wants to buy this product. You take the French mason. He wants a light a scaffold, uh, easy to manipulate. He will tell you that it's easier to have a, a light a scaffold because if he carries on, he will have less problem with his back. Uh -huh. What can you do with that? Nothing. If you force the German to buy the French scaffold, it will never work. It's so, it's a matter of culture. A matter of culture, we understood, we had the chance to understand that very early. Whether, whatever your re religion, whatever your culture, whatever your place, you have your own, your own culture. And you put this together. How to put this together? To make a universal culture, which is Altrad's culture. It, 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 it starts with a few simple principles. First of all, I have to admit that you have a different culture than me. But it's a big start. It means it looks not like nothing, but it's an important step. Jay, I don't know you. I meet you for the first time, but I accept your culture. And I accept it really because I have to accept that you have different circuits in your brain that are different from mine, so the output is different. It's a major step forward. This is a major step forward, but it's not enough. Yeah. Yeah. I have to find something different or uh, additional or that uh, adds on. So, accept the culture of the other. Second one is to understand that this is the step uh, ahead. But again, it's not enough. Example again, just to illustrate. Accept that the German or the Polish would like to have a concrete mixer which turns uh, faster than the English one. Except that the English user of a concrete mixer want, want a, a, a concrete mixer to be folded. Why? Because it has to stand on its feet and has to produce cement. He, he, will, he will tell you that it is absolutely necessary for him not to buy the the concrete mixer, but to rent it, you see. 
So he used it for two days, and then it's finished. He finished his work. <clears throat> Whereas the French uh, person, French user, he will tell you, no, no, I, I would like to buy it. He will use it one week, and then it will, it will stay somewhere and will never use it. But again, you have to accept this. You have to accept it's different. Great. So, some, some great insights, I think, into the, yes. to the innovation uh, and, and expansion of business, right, the entrepreneurs. But can you talk a little bit, uh, there's been a lot of discussion in the earlier sessions about innovation, about disruption. Yes. And th this would be viewed probably as a business that would be thought of as not subject to massive disruption or technological advances, scaffolding. How does that play into your organization? How do you encourage innovation, yes. uh, creativity? What are the things that uh, you're thinking about that have helped you to become the market leader? Yes. Um, yes, culture, we just talked about it, although we can, uh, we can develop a lot about this subject of culture, whereby uh, it's not accepting, not understanding only culture of the other, but also uh, putting it, uh, put, giving it a plus value. Uh, uh, and that's where we invented a few words in our charter saying, uh, I don't know how this can, could be said in, said in English, uh, subsidiarity. I don't care. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if in a group of people, such as in Altrad, if we find something which is good in a, in a certain place, I don't know, in Romania, for instance, this thing has to apply to everybody else, yeah. okay? This is called in French subsidiarity. Mm -hmm. So this what, now back to your question, how, what's the, 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 the space or the place reserved to innovation? First of all, we take as a principle that uh, the technology of production, firstly, is easy. Secondly, uh, uh, we have to to control and to understand and to master this business of production. It's easy. So this is agreed, understood, accepted. There are procedures, quality control and all that. Now, the step forward is uh, our business, is, uh, is what we are doing every day is really uh, making it possible for people to, 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 to lift themselves in hate to, to work. Up in buildings, the air. Yeah, up in the air, yeah. So, yeah, uh, in buildings, in refinery, in nuclear center, in ports, airports, wh wherever. If you, if you fall uh, from this hate, y you might hurt your leg, your feet. But if you fall from something like 10 or 30, key, uh, 30 meters hate, then Believe me, it's, it's, uh, it's, you, you, you're dead. So the innovation, firstly, as I said, it is culture, accepting the culture of the other, but also safety, safety. So we had at zero accident, and this is really what we are. Now, this is again an additional culture which is common to all the nationalities, the origin of the Altad group, safety. Head, for safety, zero accident. Yeah, yeah. Your, your, your passion, I want to shift just a, a bit. You mentioned earlier some of the opportunities that have come up. And I know entrepreneurship and creating a culture of entrepreneurial development has been important. President Hollande reached out to you to ask you to help yes. in France. And, and I think as entrepreneurs, uh, we all represent a community about helping to create jobs. Talk a little bit about that. What, what you're trying to do, how other entrepreneurs might think about the environment uh, to create an entrepreneurial culture and the jobs that are out there, um, and, and perhaps specifically what you're doing in France uh, to try to yes. encourage that. Yes. Firstly, I think the uh, most important uh, worldwide uh, enterprise who promote entrepreneurship is EY. Believe me, yeah? this is what I think. Uh, private. Uh, believe me, the, uh, the government bodies, they think they are the most uh, uh, body who promote uh, entrepreneur, uh, which is not totally true. Uh, now, 
through this exposure I was talking about in the beginning of uh, our talk, yes, President Hollande invited me. We talked about a lot of things, politics, economy, uh, migration, immigration, uh, exodus, and all this. Yeah, uh, he, he asked me to carry on a mission for, for the country national, on the nation, national level. And uh, this is the following. If you take the cartography of the country in France, you can locate 1,500 zones. Uh, what is in these zones? You find 11.5 million people in it. What, what are the characteristics of this population? Well, firstly, 70% of them, huge number, are inactive. They don't work. In practice, it's a family uh, with six, seven people. One of them is working, struggling, and the others uh, not work. You find 26% unemployed in this population. You find three times poverty, mm -hmm. uh, people living under the threshold of poverty. And obviously, part uh, of this population, you find them in, uh, with ISIS uh, being terrorist. So this is my mission, is to to help these population to try to improve their conditions. It's a tough job. I accepted it because it's part of my philosophy since I started this business. I'm motivated by this because of my origins, uh, non-French, becoming French. By the way, I have no, no longer a, a country, <laughs> yeah. so I have to be French but with pleasure being French. So this prize, I said I won it for France. Right. So I'm helping this population. And you talked about, and I, in my opening, I talked about the importance of education. I mean, that's really what triggered your migration to France. And the role of education in creating future entrepreneurs, connecting with yes. that community? Yes. If you look again to this population, I'm sure you find this in every country at, at different configuration. Yes. What's the problem of this population? They, they are not informed of their rights and obligation. In France, this population are first, second, third generation are Arabs. So they, they live together. And if you go to these uh, uh, zones, we call them quartier, these zones, it's as if you, you were in Algeria. <laughs> but it's strange, they are born in France, they have a French passport, and they are French. They talk French, they don't talk Arabic, but they are French. So they, they are not informed. They are not educated because the children, very, very early in their uh, uh, courses, they think it's useless to carry on, they stop. And also, since they are not formed, not informed, and that obviously not financed because they can't put together a project to be financed by a bank, by a private institution. So my role is, is that, is, to, form, is to, to inform, to help these populations through education, through, uh, through well, telling them their rights and also encouraging them to carry on uh, in school and also bring in money because I have a, to start with a budget of three billion euro in the national budget to help this population. But hopefully with three, these three billion to try to motivate other private uh, funds. funds. Funds to match it, right? Yes, to, to make the three, to make the 10, 15, 20. And, and rest assured, an entrepreneur will make that three billion yes, go a yes. lot lo, a lot farther than the government would. Yes. So that's yes. that's terrific. Um, Moed, I want to open it up to some questions, but I want to ask one. I, I mentioned earlier uh, the rugby, and uh, Moed owns the Montpellier rugby team. Now, interestingly enough, wildly successful, won the European Challenge just a couple weeks ago, and is playing for the French title on Sunday. But when you bought the team in 2011, you had never been to a rugby match. 
So explain to the audience how an entrepreneur would end up going into the rugby <coughs> sports team business um, and, and how you've been uh, able to make that successful. Yes. Yeah. Again, it's a, it's a human venture, as, as I said it earlier, in a certain way. Whatever the project, it's, I think you have to look at it as a human venture. You live every day with your colleagues, and this is the human venture. A company is a sort of fight every day, you know it. You, we, we come into the office and we have a, lo a long list of problems. It's, it's a sort of fight. It's a fight against adversity. Adversity is part of our life. Whatever you think, whatever you want, every day you have to resolve a, a, a list more or less long, more or less short, but you have problems. So the rugby, whether it's a, it's a discipline, so I saw in it, it's a strange, Jay, because if you try, it's a business, uh, looked uh, through the angle of flow, it's a business like any others, uh, whether, whether it's a scaffold or whatever. You have to obey to, uh, to, the, to, to the business laws in, in all the countries. The rugby is the same. The trouble with that is to define what's your product in rugby. What's the product you are selling? Because, for instance, give you a few figures. We, we have a team of 50, 50 players, but we have medicines, we have uh, coaches, we have uh, uh, accountants, we have all the other departments of a normal company. But we never defined what's the product you are selling. We have a, a turnover, 25 million a year. So we invoice. But try to define first what's the product. Right. The product actually, if you ask people, we don't know what's the product. So the product, if you look at it, is the game you are preparing the whole week and you are producing Saturday or Sunday. That's your product. That's what you sell. Right. So already, we, if we define this, you see, it's we, we, we progress. So through this product, which you can sell through television rights or through people who are coming to the stadium or whatever food you, you, you sell and all that, that's the product. So it's a human venture with these people. Tell them that it is a human venture. And uh, for instance, uh, I, when, I talk, uh, when I talk to them, I don't talk to them very often because it's not my job, but I have to talk to them, for instance, tomorrow before the game. And I'm going to tell them, it's in your life, it's a fight. It's a fight. It's a, it's a, a revenge, not against men or women, not at all. It's a revenge against life, but you have to win this battle, absolutely. So sometime in your life, all of us, sometime you will reach a point where it's like this, you see, a rustle, a rustle, huh? okay. rustle uh, you have to sustain, and your adversary is, is not maybe stronger or weaker than yourself. So you have to sustain this, and you, this is the, the second where you win or you lose. And this is adversity in life. All of us have small or big adversity, but it's adversity. Great, great advice for all of you uh, entrepreneurs. I'm going to open it up for a question or two. We've got one back in the corner. Why don't we go there first? And then uh, I'm already getting the signal we're over time. So go ahead. Between uh, Nobel Prize of Literature for one of your books the European Championship Cup for your rugby team or 30% growth for the company, which would you pick? Sorry, I didn't so catch the beginning. He, he wanted to know if you had a choice between the Nobel Prize for your book, yes. uh, the European Cup for, for rugby, or 30% growth, what would you choose? Yeah, b both. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's right, that's right. We, I uh, want it all. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> all right, one more question uh, back over here. Um, you have a mission to develop entrepreneurship in, uh, in communities in uh, France. Uh, uh, what will be the best way to stimulate entrepreneurship into communities like those that you mentioned? What would be the way to determine them to go into such a mission? Yeah, it is a difficult mission. 
because if you look at the, I'm not to criticize anybody, if you look at the national uh, way of handling this, this subject, uh, for the last uh, 30 years uh, in France, whether it's the left or the right governments, respective, th there was little attention to the subject because it's a difficult subject. So I have the chance, if you like, to be known by this population and have the chance to, to go to talk to them without being um, attacked by them. If you, maybe if you are a 100% French <laughs> and you go to these areas, you might have trouble. Uh, you might have your wheels broken, car broken, you have some problem. So it's difficult. So first of all, it's, um, that's that. And secondly, it's going to be very long, very long. We need a lot of time to do it. But to start with, and as you know it, the most difficult thing for an entrepreneur, the way I see it is as, an, as an entre, uh, a company, is to know your client. This is the first thing. Without knowing your client, you can't talk to, to, to him, then you have no chance to get a job or to get business with him. So these, these 11.5 million people, they are known because dangerous people, so they, they are in a file through the general, uh, uh, what are, uh, whatever, you, police or national security. Yep. So they are known. So this is a big step forward. And then we have to go and to talk to them and said, well, look, I'm coming to help you through education. I'm going to help you through um, uh, whatever, inform you what, what are your rights and your obligations. And then I'm bringing you uh, money to finance you then believe me, it's, it's going to work because it's, it's all positive for them. But it's going to take time. It's a matter of culture and change of culture. And the thing which is the, long, the heaviest and the most complicated thing is to change culture of people. Perfect. Moet, last question, and, and it is probably unfair to ask you to do this quickly, but advice to all of our nominees sitting in the same chair that you were in a year ago? Anything that you want to, to say to them as they go into the, uh, the Entrepreneur of the Year Awards tomorrow and, uh, and obviously go back to their, their own companies uh, on Sunday? Yes. Um, it's a pity that uh, we can't give them, all of them, a, a word on the Entrepreneur of the Year. But I know all of them have qualities to win this prize. Believe me, last year I saw a very beautiful project. And if one of these projects was accorded the title of Entrepreneur of the Year, I wouldn't say that that was unfair. So it's very difficult, very difficult to, to say something. The only thing I can wish you is to, is to, is to win. But there will be a lot of deception, I know that. And there is, will be only one winner. I can't say more than this, uh, but it's, a, it's the victory of entrepreneurship in general. Believe me, there is no first, no second. No. It's all the merit, uh, this title. Great insights on culture, on the human adventure. Ladies and gentlemen, thank Mohit Altrad for spending some time with us. Thank you.